Hello everyone. In the last video, we saw how we are able to control the flow and the order of uh, execution of our code by using a conditional statement, right? So we started our video with a basic condition statement, if else statement. If the condition is fulfilled, then the code chunk inside the if uh, statement gets executed, and if the condition is not satisfied, then the code chunk inside the else statement gets executed. That's how the if else structure is is designed. To extend our discussion further, in this video we will use uh, nested and stacked if else structures. Now, when we can able to use nested and stack if else structures? When you want to weave in the intricate parts of decision making by checking the number of conditions at various stages during execution. So we will see how the nested if else structure looks like, how the stacked if else structure looks like, and uh, the last part of the video will be the switch just statement. So as the name suggests, it uh, works as a switch. The switch gives you the various options of uh, operations, right? In a similar manner, the switch statement in R gives you uh, various uh, options of executing a particular chunk of code. So largely, it does the same thing as uh, nested uh, if else statements, but uh, uh, in terms of writing the code, the switch statement is more concise in uh, representation compared to the nested if else structure. So we are going to see the switch statement. So that's the agenda. So without uh, further ado, let's start with uh, our discussion on nested if else statement. So in the nested if else structure, you can, as you can see that the if statement can be placed within the outcome of another if statement. So let me explain you the structure here. So as you can see, this is the outer if else structure. Okay, this is the outer if else structure, and within this outer if else structure, you can see another if else structure, which is inside this outer if else structure. This is called as an inner inner if else structure. Okay. And because this inner if else structure is inside the outer one, this arrangement is called a nested if else arrangement. Nested if else structure. Okay. Now, how does it work? Obviously, uh, it has the condition. If this condition is fulfilled, then it will go execute plan A and then it will go and execute this inside if else structure. If this condition is not fulfilled, then obviously it will jump directly to the else part and then it will execute plan D. In that case, it won't get uh, this nested if else structure won't get executed. So, this is how the nested if else structure looks like. So, this is how the nested if else structure looks like. Now, let's open the R session and let's use the nested if else structure in the code. So this is a uh, chunk of code which will give you the idea of how the if else structure looks like. So I've created two objects here, object A and object my number. I'm initiating those objects with 6 and 4. Then I'm using the if else structure here. And within each of the if else, and I'm using if else structure here. And as you can see that within if part, I have one if else loop nested inside it and within L par, else part I have another if else loop nested inside it. Okay, so essentially I have two nested if else structures. Now let's see how we can able to execute this code. Now the first condition will be A less than or equal to my number. If this condition is satisfied then the first nested if else structure will get executed, which falls within the if part of the body. However, if this condition is not satisfied, then the code will directly jump to the else part. In that case, the 
another if else structure which sits inside the else part will get executed. So with this given values of a and my number, let's check how the flow of uh, code execution will be. So as you can see, obviously the first uh, condition will not get satisfied because uh, a is not uh, less than or equal to my number. So this entire if part will get skipped. The else part will get executed. So it will print out the first uh, string first condition was false so this will print, get printed out then a will be reduced by three and a half and then uh, the nested if else part will get executed so the my number will be checked if it's greater than or equal to four in this case it is then this string will get printed and then the value of b will be changed to this expression okay so let's uh, execute this code and let's check what the results that we are getting so as you can see that the first condition was false so this string gets executed because this condition is now is not fulfilled the else part will get executed then a will be reduced by three and a half so that's what exactly shown here the value of a initially we initiated it at six it got reduced by three and a half so the final value will be two and a half that's what got, it, it gets printed then it will go into the nested if else part within the nested if else part since my number is equal to four this condition gets satisfied and that's why the string which sits inside the nested if part second condition was true this gets printed and finally the value of p whatever the value comes by executing this expression it, it gets printed okay so now let's change this value from 6 to say 3 Now let's check what happens. Yeah, now here the first condition got fulfilled. It enters into the if part of the statement, and that's why it has printed the first string. The first condition was true. Then a is squared up. My number is again checked with three. In this case, my number is greater than three, so this condition is also satisfied. The second condition was true. This string got printed. And finally, then the B is, sim is simply the sequence from 1 to 9. 9 in this case is the square of A, it's 9. And that sequence gets printed as B over here. So this is how the nested if else structure looks like. Now let's see. <coughs> Now let's see how stacked if in structure looks like. So uh, in stacked if in structure, it's the same thing. You can accomplish the same output using the stacked if in structure. And uh, in this uh, structure, you have the if statements stacked sequentially one after another. So as you can see here, you have this uh, if if statement. You have another if statement, and these if statements are stacked one after another sequentially. And each of these if statements has a condition to fulfill, and depending upon the condition, the code within the if structure gets executed. Okay. In the nested if else structure, we have entire if if else structure inside the outer if else structure but here we have a separate if conditions stacked one after another okay so that's the that's the difference so now let's see how we can able to execute the stacked if else structure in r so let's open our session and try out one example 
So here it is. It's a, it's the same code. It's the same code, but this code now is arranged using a stack defile structure. Okay, so you have this if command, if section, which has uh, and logical operator. Remember how the and logical operator works. It has two conditions. If both the conditions are true, then the outcome will be logical true. But if any of the condition is false, then the outcome will be logical false. Now, in order to satisfy this condition, you need to have both these conditions to, to be true. <clears throat> now, if these both conditions are true, then it will go inside the if bar and it will print out A and B. If any of this condition is not fulfilled, then this condition will be false. Then it will check. The second condition and if this second condition is also not true then it will go and check the third condition likewise it will check all the conditions one after another so let's execute this chunk of code and let's find out the output so this is the output that I got so what's going on here uh, the first condition of course is not uh, true so r will not going to execute the if part then it will move over to f else if part the condition for the else if will get now tested now this condition also uh, is not uh, satisfied because here a is less than or equal to my number so this condition is false so this entire so this condition is false so this entire f is statement will not be executed the R will now going to check the next uh, available if else statement. Remember these if else are stacked one after another. So what is the next condition? This is the next condition. My number is greater than or equal to 4. In this case, this condition is satisfied and the code within the chunk if else chunk uh, gets executed. So it has printed same as first condition for and it has reduced a by three and a half so it has printed a and similarly it has printed b whatever the value that has come out of this expression okay now let's uh, change these values let me change a to two let's check what happens now i've changed a to two okay and let me execute this command now in this case what's happening here is that this part, this condition which was false earlier now will be true because A is indeed less than uh, my number. Similarly this condition is also fulfilled. My number is greater than 3. So both these conditions are fulfilled that means this entire condition is fulfilled because there is an AND condition. It's an AND statement. It will execute the IF part. So it has executed the if part by printing the first uh, string, first condition true and the second true. Then it has squared up the a, remember the value of a is 2, so it has squared it up to 4 and it has printed the sequence as b. So this is the sequence, right? So depending upon what value that you are initiating, the stack defense structure will give you the same output as nested defense structure. But the uh, the way of representation of both the structures is different. Okay. So with this slide, perhaps you can able to point out the differences between the stack defense structure and the nested defense structure. So on the left hand side, you have a nested defense structure. right hand side you have a stack different structure okay so both these structures essentially produce the same output but as you can see that the stack different structure is more concise compared to the nested effects so if I uh, were to give you the relationship diagram between these two structures then uh, this part Okay, and this part is taken care by this part. 
as you can see that this condition and this condition is taken care by this and statement okay similarly the else part and the first uh, if part is taken care by this else if statement if you can closely see that this condition now will be the negation of this condition because we are dealing with the else part so it has to be a negation of this condition okay similarly if i go to the else part of this if else structure and this one will be taken care by this chunk of code this condition is the, is the same as this one okay this one and finally the else part let me use another color here finally this else part and the first uh, else part of the outer loop is taken care by this chunk of code okay and because the various conditions are clubbed together with the help of AND operators you can see that the stack different structure is more concise in notation okay so let me use the arrows here arrows so this one is this this one is this similarly this one is here this one also fits in here and finally this one fits in here okay so this is how the nested if else and the stack if else structures are now let's understand how we can able to deal with the switch so now let's understand the switch statement now if, uh, imagine that you have this object called my string and depending upon the value of this my string object you would want to execute a specific piece of code Okay, so one way of doing this is using stack defense structure. So this is a stack defense structure. And in this case, my string will have five different values. Okay, now here in this example, I've used the string, but my string can also have the different numeric values. Okay. And depending upon the value that my string has, a specific condition will get satisfied. For example, let's see that my string has a value of bar. Okay, so this condition gets satisfied, and then 56 will be assigned to object called foo. So this is the scenario that we have. Now, this is quite a cumbersome way of uh, doing the work, isn't it? Imagine that you have 10 different uh, values for the my string. So you will have 10 different conditions and this stack if in structure would get extended to cover all those conditions. So that code itself will be long and cumbersome. R gives you a very simple and much more concise way of dealing with such situation okay so R gives you the option of using a switch statement now what switch statement does it has a keyword called switch and it has a keyword called expression this expression will have a certain value in this case this expression is assigned to a value called my string okay and because my string is initiated with peter 
they the expression will also have a value beta and depending upon the value of expression the particular piece of ch code chunk will get executed okay so these are the various options that you have now in this case the my string because the expression is assigned to my string and my string is having a value of peter in this entire switch statement the peter is not represented therefore the foo will be assigned a value of na now if it had been a case wherein my string is say initiated with lisa then the output would have been 78 because now the expression would find lisa and it will print out that value so this is how the switch statement works let's find out using the r code how we can able to write the switch statement so let's open the r session so as you can see here my string is initiated with lisa and within the switch statement with the help of expression it will find out the exact match of the string and the value of lisa will get populated as an outcome similarly if i change lisa to say maggie then it should print out then it should give me value as 90 okay so this is how the switch statement is used so to sum up in this video we learned the nesting of if else statement nesting means if if statement can can be placed within the outcome of another if statement then we also saw, saw the stacking stacking means several if else statements are placed one after another using stacking and nesting we can create the intricate decision making paths in our code and one way of representing the stacking structure in a more concise manner is using a switch statement so that's it we have come to the end of the video if you are liking this video then you may like to subscribe to my youtube channel infinity a channel for data science you can also hit the bell icon so that you can get the immediate notifications as soon as i post the video on youtube thanks for watching thank you very much take care and bye bye